uh, welcome to today's sharing. Um, Zach Miak from Katavi Church. Last week we shared something about uh, trusting the Good Shepherd, and we saw that God is referred to as a shepherd because of the way he looks after his people and uh, he calls his people sheep because he's, he's looking after them and uh, the sheep are very meek animals and therefore God's people must be meek and so we saw that as a good shepherd he's good to us he knows us he leads us and when we go astray he restores us for in the path of righteousness for his name's sake today we would like to share something about enjoying god's love so our topic today is enjoy god's love let's pray our father in heaven we want to thank you today as we listen to you we pray may you speak to us through your holy spirit i pray that i will not be speaking did not be me speaking but you are the conduit of bringing your love to your people father open our ears and eyes of understanding that we may hear your word understand it and see the truth in it we pray this in jesus name amen so today we are seeing enjoying God's love. So brother sister who is listening to me I just want to say that just enjoy God's love. And would like to sh to read a few verses from Psalms 136 from verse 1 to verses 4. Uh, it says, Give thanks to the Lord for his good, his love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, his love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, his love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders. Does what? Great wonders. Why? Because his love endures forever. So, you can add on the two verses. Who by his understanding made the heavens, why his love endures forever. Who spread out the earth upon the waters, his love endures forever. God loves you. And the love for you endures forever. It doesn't matter how you feel it. His love for you and yours forever. In Isaiah 54, verse 10, he says, Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has says the Lord who has compassion on you. So he says, even if the mountains be removed. You know, mountains, when you are moving mountains, you, you consider the earthquake. When the earthquake comes, it shakes everything. And it attracts everybody's attention. Even when you are sleeping, you will be shaken you realize that something is happening. So there are circumstances which come in our lives and they attract your attention, even if you didn't want to, 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 have, to put attention on anything. Even if you feel you're okay, but they come. You have a family member sick, you must put your attention there. Now you wake up to take the family member to hospital. Maybe it is 30 kilometers or 20 or 40. As you go, 
you are driving the, the person in the car, the clutch plate goes off, it attracts your attention. And in the process, you may be there working on the clutch plate. Now you have the patient, you have the clutch plate. Then all of a sudden somebody comes, maybe you have somebody's date, and said, you man, I've been looking for you, you've been dodging me. So, the man also attracts your attention. So that's what the Bible says, even if those things come, even if the mountains be shaken, in other words, even if your stability be shaken, God is unnamed love. His covenant of love will not, be, will not be removed from you. So I want you to know that God loves you whatever the circumstance you are going through. And uh, it doesn't matter. Those, those days when I was young, I would sit in a vehicle. And as a younger person, as the vehicle moved very fast, it looked like the grasses, the trees, the buildings were moving backwards. So I kept thinking it is the environment moving and not the vehicle. But as I grew up, I realized the grass, the, the environment was permanent and the vehicle was the one moving. So even us, when we have these circumstances, we have temptations, we have trials, maybe we have you are sick, you lack a job, your business is going down, the debts are increasing, this and the other. Well, you think God's love is not there because for you, it is like the grass I was seeing moving when, I, when I, it was like, as I used to think that the grass was moving when the vehicle was moving. So many times when these problems come, we are tempted to think that God does not love us. But I want you to know that God loves you, with, irrespective of whether you are educated or not, irrespective of what knowledge you have. You know, sometimes knowledge can be a hindrance. Like in Ecclesiastes 118, it says the knowledge can be a hindrance. I mean, I mean, so things should not disrupt you. What you think about God does not hinder God from loving you. Even when you say God doesn't love you, he's not there. Still God loves you because he's, he's still waiting for you to recognize that. He's there and he loves you. So your attitude should not uh, rob you of, of God's love. Even if there are problems, if you read Isaiah 43 and verses 1 and uh, we're not opening because of the, sh the time, if you read the verses 1 to 3, you will see how much God loves you, even if you are going through waters. He says even when you go through waters, rivers, you will not be drowned. Even when you go with fires, you will not be scorched because I will be with you. In other words, that problem which you think is troubling you, God is there right with you. In the midst of that problem, we have a story, a very interesting story, in the book of Daniel, chapter 3, where uh, three children, so Hebrew ch children, Meshach, Abednego, and Shadrach were thrown in the furnace of fire because they disobeyed orders of worshipping an idol, an image. But they said, we shall not worship. But they threw them in the furnace of fire, but they were not burnt. The Bible says, they sm their clothes did not smell, their hair was not even singed because God he loved them and like he loves you and in the midst of that trouble God with them and from there the king glorified God so I want you to know that God loves you so if God loves you how do we respond to God's love how do you respond? Somebody loves you. you no know, love is between two people. You cannot, uh, love is incomplete when somebody loves you and for you are not loving that person. So God wants us to respond by accepting his love. As he loves us, he wants us to love him. And the first love God wants us to have is the eternal life. If you read John chapter 3, verse 16, 
said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever loves him should not perish but have everlasting life. So, once you have received the Son of God in your life, Jesus Christ, and you have got the eternal life, that is it. That is where life hinges. Life does not hinge on anything, but it hinges on, 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 on our salvation in the Son of God who gave himself for us. He loved us and he laid his life for us. And when we accept him, we give, we, he gives us eternal life. If you read another verse, verse Romans 5, 8, it will tell you how God loved us even when you are yet sinners. When you are still not obeying God, he died for us. So we have to accept God's love by accepting eternal life of Jesus Christ. The second is, you remove the barrier. Because there are barriers hindering you to accept this eternal life. It may be a barrier of knowledge. You interpret God with your mind. You interpret your problem. Maybe it may be a problem and you think without God cannot solve it. It may be a circumstance. It may be people around you. What will people say? No. Remove every barrier and accept God's love. The other thing, the third point, which I want to end with, is we respond to God's love by loving one another. God, Jesus said by this People will know that you are the children of God by loving one another. People know that you have accepted God's love. And uh, I wanted us to read a verse, uh, verse chapter, first John, the, the epistle of John, chapter 4, uh, verses 6 to 8. What does it say? Let, let's, let's start from... Uh, verse 7 it says dear friends let us love one another for love comes from God everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God whoever does not know God whoever does not love does not know God because God is love so if you don't know if you don't have love it means you don't know God but if you have love for your neighbor the Bible says we should love one another. And you should love your neighbors. You should love Aryans. You should love the poor. You should love the rich. Everybody, whether it's young, old, rich, poor, whatever it is. And even the Bible says we should love our enemies. If you read uh, Matthew 20, 22, you can read 37, 39. The Lord God say, gave us that you love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, as, uh, and with all your strength. And then you love yourself, your neighbors, you love one another. In other words, God is love. God wants you to know you love him. And he wants you to remove every barrier to his love. And he wants you to love one another, even if he's your enemy. He said, love your enemy. And the qualification, I mean, the, the definition for his love, Jesus' definition is that, love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you don't know how to love others, love your neighbor as you love yourself. That is the love, to know that you love. So, as I end, I want us to, I want us to know that God loves us and he would like us to love one another. And uh, Jesus demonstrated it by, by, Jesus demonstrated it by laying his life on the cross for us. So we need to love one another and our love should be deep. The love for your neighbor should be deep. It should be sincere. And should be coming from your heart. First Peter chapter 1 verse 1 to 22. You read. When, when, afterwards. You will see how that God wants our love to be very deep from our hearts. 
So when we love, when we, when we love our neighbors, we shall have perfected our love for God. When we love our enemies, even if somebody hates you, it doesn't matter how much he hates you, even if somebody is not grateful for what you are doing, whatever you do, just love him. And when you love him, you enjoy because the spirit of love, of love is in you. If you have the spirit of love in you, you'll find that your heart is loving. So dear members, dear members uh, colleagues who have been listening to me, I just want to, you to enjoy God's love. First by knowing God loves you, irrespective of the circumstance you are going through, irrespective of your problems. And don't allow anything to stand between you or to deceive you that God does not love you. Don't allow, because it doesn't change God's love. Even if you think he doesn't love you, still he loves you. Even if you say he can't solve my problem, still he loves you and will solve you, will go through that problem and help you to solve you, the problem. So after you have removed that negative attitude about God's love and you have known it, Start enjoying it. Receive Jesus Christ in your heart. That is the beginning of love. Eternal life. Life without end. Because life on earth, whatever we do, we are trying to make, get love out of the things we do, out of the people we have. But eternal life is far exceedingly, abundantly, above the satisfaction which we get on earth. So we should not miss it. And we should invite Jesus in our hearts. And we should demonstrate this love to others because once God wants us to be a conduit. God wants you to be a conduit of love to your people. Wherever you are, in your family, God wants you to be a conduit of God's love. In your place of work, God wants you to be a conduit of God's love. In your business, wherever you are placed, be a conduit of God's love. May God bless you. Let's pray. Father our God, we just want to thank you as you have been talking to us about your love. God, we know this love is made possible by your spirit. And you said nobody can say Jesus is Lord except by your spirit. Therefore we pray you pour your spirit upon all, all of us as you say, promised in your word. That in the last days you are going to pour your spirit, your spirit upon all flesh. Therefore pour your spirit upon all of us. Let your spirit convict us of sin of righteousness and judgment. Let your spirit remove every hindrance of Satan and the flesh from receiving your love. And let us receive your love. Father, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.